I'm going to be talking about how to protect whole computer systems against virus attack. So we're looking first at the types of attack, the reason why we need a new defense strategy, and we'll look at that under subheadings as we go along. Now what types of attack are we looking at? In the past, cyber attacks were mainly carried out by amateurs and criminal gangs. More recently, they've been commercialised in that companies exist who develop and detect exploits and weaknesses in common software packages like Microsoft Explorer. Companies develop these exploits and then they sell them to defence and intelligence agencies. So these agencies can use them to penetrate people's computer systems. They may also sell them to criminals. Government agencies like GCHQ and National Security Agency in the state tap communications lines. Chat services like Facebook, Google and Skype must be assumed to co cooperate uh, with these agencies and transmit data to them. And it's significant that when Microsoft took over Skype, they switched it to a server base rather than a peer-to-peer -peer network. Well, first look at traditional viruses. They install themselves and then propagate either by email or by external storage media like USB sticks or SD cards. The most notorious recent example was the Stuxnet virus, which propagated via USB sticks the US distributed, or somebody, we assume it's the US, distributed USB sticks with this virus on the market in Iran. Some of them got onto the machines which were used for uh, controlling centrifuges. These machines had been isolated from the internet, but they were still able to take over control of the machines, target the industrial control software operate the centrifuges outside safe parameters in such a way that they experienced excessive wear and tear and broke down. Now How do the buffer overflow attacks, they're a second technique, how do they work? They rely on badly written programs, typically in C, on the host to allow messages from external software to override part of the program. Typically it's something like a string read operation which reads to a local variable array and since there's no array bounds checking in C, this can result in going beyond the bounds of the array overwriting the return address on the stack since the local variables held on the stack. This then, when you return from the routine, transfers control into a block of code that had been read in in that string which then takes over the computer. The overwriting controlled code gains control and then can install other um, malware which it downloads and such attacks can be launched from malicious websites. I'm giving just one example of a technique which uh, allows code to be inserted into the um, executable of a machine. Obviously you, this can be dealt with by having all your code written in Java which will tend to, to secure it, um, but there's a lot of C code out there.
Now, we need a new defence strategy against this. The traditional defence has been what I call immunological defence. It works on the model of the vertebrate acquired immune system. Our immune system learns to recognise pathogens and then produces antibodies against them. On the first time we encounter a new virus with no defence, if that is a particularly vicious virus like SARS and Ebola, it may kill us. If it's a less virus, it still produces illness, but we're unable to deal with the virus until we produce the antibodies. And we can't produce the antibodies till we've encountered the virus. That's the same basic model as is used by antivirus software. It relies on the providers of software to recognise motifs that are common in the viruses. A brand new virus will, uh, will not be detected unless it shares certain motifs, that is to say certain repeated sequences of bytes that occur in previous versions of the virus. Easy to scan through a, um, a file to detect these, but unless you know what the patterns are, you won't be able to detect the virus. And therefore new viruses can spread readily until antivirus software develops a, a, a defence. Now the alternative strategy, again biologically motivated, is ecosystem diversity. If you have a monoculture of maize, for example, and a plant virus gets into that field, it'll spread like wildfire because you've got the same plants next to one another with the same gene genetic structure and the virus can therefore, if it can affect one plant, can infect the whole lot. That's quite different from uh, what would happen if the maize virus encountered a natural savanna or a natural forest. It would not be able to spread from neighbouring plant to neighbouring plant since the different plants would be of different species and would have different genetic composition. And a virus is highly targeted to the genetic composition of its host. The equivalent of the genome in a plant is the machine code of a microprocessor. Microprocessors with the same machine code and same operating software can be infected by the same viruses. PCs, for example, all have the Intel instruction set. Android phones all run the Dalvik instruction set. As such, each of these constitutes uh, an ecosystem that is a monoculture and is subject to a given set of viruses. Android is somewhat safer, of course, since Dalvik is a, a Java virtual machine code uh, and Java is safer than C. Our, how do we apply this ecosystem? Well, we use permutation. A machine code is a list of numbers with special meanings to a computer. So that um, zero might mean load, one might be in store, etc. And machines typically recognize hundreds of these codes. Android recognizes 256. And all programs that run on these systems rely on having a standard interpretation of the codes, since these codes give semantics to the programs that are running on them. Now, what if you change the code? If you change the code, the semantics no longer works. One way of doing that is to permute the opcodes, have the same set of opcodes in semantic terms, but have different numbers standing for them. Once you've done that, no software that's running on a standard chip will run on the permuted chip. So where previously zero meant load, now it means jump. Where one meant store, now it means add. And no malware designed for the standard chip machine code will be able to run on this. How can that be done? Is it feasible to build hardware that will do this or build software that will do this? Well, let's have a look. Suppose you've got um, the machine shown here. You've got main memory. You've got in light blue 
components of the standard through a computer, an instruction cache, a data cache, an execution unit. But you add in this purple execution unit, permu permutation unit. And the permutation unit is a table with 256 entries that maps each of the opcodes to a different number. A 256 to 256 one to one mapping. And that gives you a permutation table with 256 factorial different possible machine codes. That's a huge number. You'll never run out of those. And it means any computer with a different permutation code will not be able to run the software that runs on your machine. And no virus that has the original opcodes will be able to run on your machine. You, how do you use it? Well, you have binary to binary translating software that converts existing software to run on a machine with a permuted instruction set, provided you know the instruction set. You can build that into a binary loader. If a, an organization or country wants to secure its machines, it maintains a database mapping some unique identifier of the machine, for instance, its MAC address, to its permutation table keeps the permutation tables and database secret, then installs tailored copies of the operating system onto each machine. And this then creates a species barrier preventing the spread of viruses or malware onto other machines. You have to do a few other tricks like reorder the positions of routines in the memory. You permute the, the orders of routines in the operating system. Uh, the chip should use a public modification of an open core risk design to prevent manufacturers introducing security backdoors. Um, it should be borne in mind that governments can exert considerable influence on national companies to introduce security backdoors. If you work with one of the open risk cores and add the extra flash unit to it, you're protected against that because you know what's in it. There's no extra processor the way there's an extra processor on Intel chips. An extra processor which on an Intel chip is there when it starts up and which you have no, no control over. Um, these, these extra control processors run the Minix operating system and have access to all I.O. channels and therefore they can communicate data directly to Intel or to anyone Intel has introduced appropriate security codes to. In summary, virus penetration machines is becoming more significant with the entry of state actors. Application of ecological principles can combat this, but this requires either tailored chips or tailored virtual machines, one or the other. 